My guest today, Jane James, is a trained opera singer and she started out teaching children how to sing after struggling to make money, being stuck on a never-ending trade of auditions. And she fell in love with teaching from then, feeling motivated by inspiring the next generation to sing. Jane taught children privately from home and in schools in her area and this moved her to start her business franchise, which is called Little Voices, so that she could help as many children as possible to be the best that they could be through drama and singing. So Jane's here today to talk about the link between mental health and the positive effects extracurricular activities can have on pupils' mental health. Jane, welcome so much to the Teachers Podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to join you, Claire. Yeah, so this is going to be a good chat. I feel like we're having a lot of performing art kind of vibes recently, which obviously I love because that's my background as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're kind of going to talk a little bit about the extracurricular activities that maybe shouldn't be extracurricular. Um, But what are you here to talk about today? Um, Really the importance of of the arts education and having that as an extracurricular activity or impacting it into school life if we can, because it's just so squeezed from the curriculum, as we all know. Um, And just looking out for the right things in providers and and, and how we can really build those transferable skills for children through through the arts. And I think sometimes teachers perhaps feel maybe underconfident delivering them. Um, so as many tips as we can all share and just build awareness of how important they are, really. Yeah, oh, no, I completely agree. I mean, obviously, as a performing arts teacher, I was secondary performing arts and I used to teach um, dance and drama. And then you know, I did a lot of covering classrooms and I remember sometimes like, oh, it's drama, but it was always just do a freeze frame. And, um, you know, I'm not like against freeze frames or anything, but it, it always struck me then like, hang on, I've re- I'm really going to have to sit down and think through if I do anything other than the freeze frame of the skills, because it's not just about just going, oh yeah, that's part of the play. Um, but it did make me realise, because I was using somebody else's planning, that we don't learn about drama or dancing or singing and how to bring that into normal lessons. So mm. then, and then we say, oh, make it all interactive and do these things. And it's like, mm, how, do I, how do I do that? That's quite quite difficult. And also, you know, if you're, you're not a confident person, that is, that really is tricky. Really hard to deliver. Yeah, yeah, really hard to deliver because there's so many levels of what's happening that you you just don't know about i don't think mm, yeah ab- ab- absolutely Be like me trying to teach um, gcse I... maths <laughs> absolutely yeah or me trying to teach science <laughs> um but it, it, yeah it is just such a shame that it's not a, a core subject and loads of importance isn't placed on it i know generally across across schools it's it's often if you've got a really forward thinking head or someone that's particularly passionate about it that it'll be impacted through the school but it'd just be great to see more schools embracing more activities certainly in the arts to to build those skill sets and also with you know the growing um problem that we've got with mental health and well-being as well it's just a great way for children to release themselves and to talk about emotion in a a non-judgmental way really yeah and and I always found um as a teacher and also as a pupil that it was just that place where sometimes the children who are good at that much else are are good at that and it's a place to to express themselves and I think what's interesting is what we try and do and I'm not saying that this is right or wrong, is that we say, all right, well, we could we could do drama, for example, or we could do performing arts, but we'll do it through a science lesson or we'll do it through a maths lesson. But in some ways, because of that, then we don't necessarily learn the actual skills that are needed so that later on we can bring it in properly or the children already yes. know how to do that because we don't give it its own importance. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And, it, it, you know, it's a whole subject in, in, in its own right, isn't it, with with so many layers layers to it so um it's just fantastic to be able to offer this activity to a school and and help them to embrace this as much as possible really yeah so why do you think then it is so important for teachers to be aware of i suppose what what we could call extracurricular skills at the moment yes um I mean, they just link in so well to core life skills. So, you know, all of the skills that you learn through the arts and through extracurricular 
um, drama, singing, dance, um, is just so transferable into other areas of your life. So, you know, walking into a job interview, going to a college interview, a part-time Saturday job, um, eye contact, teamwork, all the French, you know, making really good friendships, um, really core things that set you up for life, really, mm-hmm. and set the children up for life. Um, and it's a shame that those bits are, are missing somehow without that being um, delivered within school. Yeah, no, I completely agree. When I think about my role now, so much of what I do is supported by what I learned in in performing arts. For example, right yes. now, I am... Absolutely speaking, <laughs> exactly, delivering. Exactly, recording this podcast. I've got three podcasts and I do a lot of leading and you, you do mm-hmm. have to to put yourself out there and leading you know half of it kind of is performing <laughs> when you when yeah, you're absolutely. leading with people mm, yeah and actually through the, through the extracurricular training through through the arts through the activity itself children are picking up these skills without even knowing mm. it it's it's just it's like unknown whereas they're sat in a maths classroom and they're learning algebra or the tables it's well that's what they're learning whereas they're learning these transferable skills in a really unknown way Mm. um it's in a really soft way that's just embedded and and that's what's so amazing about it yeah and then they can use that to help them with their other subjects if that's a way that they really like to learn i guess absolutely because in every classroom um you're going to be asked to present something at some point in time or uh, re- you know put your hand up in class even just that confidence to do that um, speak out loud work within a team situation within the classroom um, so that all happens within school but then obviously that's transferable in in wider life as well as they grow up yeah so as um as with a lot of things you know after the pandemic or through the pandemic performing arts is kind of being pushed to one side hasn't it why do yes. you think that it's really important now that it that it comes back into the classroom i think it's got to come back for our social skills um a lot of children well all children were being educated remotely weren't they in quite isolating situations um those two years quite vulnerable years in children's lives which we don't appreciate until years go by, but we're going to see a massive impact of that. Mm. Um, so bringing drama, bringing music back into the classroom to give them, to build those social skills, those talking about emotions, w- working with each other. Um, again, without even knowing that you, you're learning or developing, that you know that will naturally happen, that personal development piece. Um, I think it's massively important considering what we've all just gone through. Um, but particularly our young people. Tell me a little bit more about Little Voices. So you've got a company called Little Voices and you do go into schools. You know, what kind of impact are you seeing? How are you helping? Um, In so many different ways. And and we work with schools in a really bespoke way. So it's up to the school itself as to how they want us to work together. Um, So we actually um, work very closely with independent schools and comprehensive schools and primary schools across the board and and take in bespoke packages to them. So it might be a four week program of, of delivering some workshops in, you know, helping them to do amazing assemblies or it might be going in to help them with the school production. Um, it might be about building confidence within one year group. Perhaps all the year fives will always access that that sort of workshop program. So it's working with the school to deliver something that's really bespoke for them. Um, so that's that's a pleasure really because it means that it's not one size fits all. You know, we are working on an individual basis. Um, we also do the after school provision, so after school clubs, after school um, um, lessons within the local communities for children from all different schools to attend. So there's a range of things that we offer at Little Voices, but fundamentally always with the child at our heart and making sure that it's about that individual child's development. So our classes are really small. Um, and, and working with, as I say, what the school's the needs are really in, in terms of where their problem places are. Yeah, and I think, you know, what you're offering is really important because it's often, you know, in a, in a primary school, you don't always have all of the skills. So sometimes, you know, you always need to have sports provision, but you don't necessarily have 
somebody who can teach all the sports and you always need to have well you don't always need to have but it's nice to have a school choir but you don't always have somebody who can play the piano or somebody who can sing or or somebody who's confident in that because I can sing but I wouldn't want to teach singing because that's not my thing because yeah. because I feel like you need to play an instrument and things like that so it, it, what you're doing is is bringing a skill that, that lots of schools don't necessarily have and and it's difficult because you want to give that to the children but you don't always have access to that absolutely so you might not have the like you say the trained individual within the school to bring those that skill set and that learning to the children um it might be that you don't have necessarily the space either you know so it might be that actually working with an organization that's locally in the community that you can recommend the children go to is is also a, a win-win for a school so there's so many different challenges that schools face whether it's down to skill sets training um or, or space as we say you know or budgets or funding so you know there's lots of ways of being able to um to bring this in and to and to help a, a school with this mm. so you're a teacher listening and you're thinking okay i want to uh, with with all the things it's like oh there's always more things to do <laughs> um but you you think yeah okay this is really important we want to try and add some of these soft skills to our lessons what kind of what kind of advice do you have for them or or even if it's adding extracurricular activities what do schools need to be looking for what do they need to be doing okay so for me it's really important that they choose who they're going to work with really carefully um a massive thing for me is that within the uk children's activities aren't regulated and a lot of schools parents they they don't realize this there isn't an offstead of of children's activities literally anyone can set themselves up in their own business and and put that over the door and that makes me really quite concerned and cautious um i think you really need to look at who you're going to bring into the school to work with you whether that's to upskill current staff or to come in and deliver the service um holistically for you um, so look at what they've got in place and, and one of the things I would look for is a kite mark so there's a couple of organizations now in the UK that are, are sort of raising the standards of children's activities and putting compliance at the forefront of, of everything that they do um, so the children's activities association is one I sit on the board as a voluntary member for the CAA um, lobbying government and, and raising the standards within the sector so I think it's important for schools to look for that kite mark so that they know who they're working with has everything in place that they need so from our side of things we've been vetted not just on a, an insurance and, and policy and procedure and, and structural point of view but also the delivery of our lessons and, and how those are structured and how they're uh, linked closely to the developmental needs of, of children so um, that's something I would really strongly advise that they look for in any activity not just the arts but you know looking for that um, benchmark kite mark really okay cool thank you um, what about teachers in the classroom? Any any ideas of how they could bring performing arts into the lessons? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think fundamentally that singing is one of the biggest things that we can embrace. And we, I truly believe that we've all got a voice. So even the teacher that sat there now today thinking, oh, I couldn't sing, um, just maybe upskilling yourself with with the confidence to use your voice and and bring singing into into the classroom, certainly at a primary level, um, you know, it's a, a really good way, a really easy way of children learning. Um, and, and the rhythm and the and the melody, they just adopt learning in a much faster way. Um, so maybe look for some, you know, maybe courses just to build your confidence to be able to deliver uh, fundamentally. That's a really simple step that perhaps you could, you could take. And, and there's lots of organisations out there that would happily, you know, support you in, in, in upskilling, you know, those, those simple starting points. Yeah, really. no, no, you're right. It's interesting because... Um, I'm always researching about something. I'm always looking at something to do with coaching or personal development or brain and body, uh, you know, and um, spiritual body connection, things like that. And um, something that I've been looking at recently is a lot about the vagus nerve. I don't know if you know anything about it, but yes, yeah, but yeah. singing really, really stimulates that nerve. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm somebody who needs to stimulate <laughs> that more um, <laughs> because I don't relax. And but you wouldn't have thought that, would you? You wouldn't have thought that actually that could help children calm down. It could help them focus. 
Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I trained as an opera singer. Um, I did my master's in opera at the Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. So we did quite a lot about the physiology of the voice and the uh, and the vagus nerve was part of that. Um, and actually, if your brain is engaged within an emotion, so you're actually thinking of a specific emotion that will naturally color the voice because the vagus nerve connects down and, and connects to the diaphragm so you breathe better you take a better breath it's more um controlled and then as you're thinking about that emotion it colors the voice in the right way so um i think there's a huge amount of work that could be could be could really help and impact children um from various backgrounds needs different you know mental health and well-being points of view um yeah it's a huge huge area yeah i love that and that makes so much sense because when i think about my um self as a performer what i find interesting is like you can be emotional and you can still dance you can be emotional and you can still find a way to act but sing very difficult very very difficult if you don't have the right emotion it's really hard to not show that in your voice (laughs) yes yeah 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 absolutely which is why you need to calm your nerves you do and focus on singularly one emotion to just calm you down and 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 have that really clear focus right i'm gonna try that now thank you so much (laughs) (laughs) um anyway thank you so much it's uh been a lovely chat um so where can we find out more about you and we're all over social media so different channels linkedin instagram Facebook, Little Voices Limited is the main page, but we've got locations and franchises across the UK. We work with a lot of teachers, people, sadly teachers leaving the profession as well that want to do something else and skill in another area. Um, but yes, so you'll find us on all the social media. Super. And um, as soon as I read the other day that half of teachers want to leave in the next five years, then um, yes, perhaps, uh, <laughs> perhaps you'll have an influx now of people interested. I know we, we we have actually since Christmas I've seen a massive maybe over about three hundred inquiries, wow. um, which is sad. It's yeah. very it's sad for yeah. me because we're losing really brilliant yeah. educators from the profession. But I understand the pressures, and actually there are alternatives. Just opening your mind to looking yeah. at other alternatives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's um, the only word I have for it is a mess. Big yeah, mess. Absolutely, it really is. You're right. Yeah. Um, but but luckily for us, we attract quite a lot of teachers that want to work with us or, or set up in business with us because obviously they're then supported and they're not on their own, yeah. which is quite a scary journey, isn't it, to, to be in business on yes, your own? Yes, so. it is. Um, obviously, I've done that. <laughs> and, uh, <it's, laughs> and, and, and I do support teachers now who who set up an education business, not who, who buy a franchise, but set up an education business because it is really scary mm-hmm. on your own, um, especially yeah. and probably like you, have had to figure it out on your own. Mm, absolutely and it's better coming from a staff room situation where you're used to working with people you're quite a good team player it can be quite isolating taking that brave step of setting up on your own so i suppose from a franchise point of view you you're running your own ship but you're captain of your own ship but you're never on your own Mm. so um that's that's some of the benefits i guess super right well thank you so much thank you very much claire lovely to speak to you you.